minor key, beautiful, pensive. In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind made moan. I am a minister, and I have been a minister for 38 years. Water like a stone. I have always been able to rely on my voice, depend on my voice. It's never let me down until a couple of years ago when it began to fail. <coughs> I've lost many notes off the top range. I just can't reach notes. As a matter of fact, I actually had to cut a piece of the service out where, I'm, where I would have sung a solo piece because I just couldn't sing that piece of music. Let's see what's going on. Yeah, you know this first. Ah. One, is one side better than the other? Do you know? Yes. The examination we perform for patients with that kind of problem involves placing a little scope through the nose and another one through the mouth. Whistle Yankee Doodle. That's a reasonable facsimile. Vocal folds are supposed to close and touch, actually, uh, like curtains in a, in a theater or on a stage. Uh, my vocal folds did not close. The effect of that is like having a hole in the sail of a sailboat. It takes twice the wind to move the boat. Deep breath. Say E again and keep it going when I suddenly let go. E Relax. You hear the difference in the strength when we bring your vocal folds closer together? Do you hear it get breathy when I let go? Yes. We also test nerve and muscle function. We do that in collaboration with our neurologist, Dr. Stephen Mandel, who performs a test called electromyography. Laryngeal electromyography involves placing needles in the laryngeal muscle and having people talk or sometimes sing. When people try to use their muscles, the nerves make the muscles fire, and Dr. Mandel can measure electrically whether they are firing at full strength or whether they are partially weakened or even completely paralyzed. Mr. Mann's laryngeal electromyography showed that our clinical impression was correct. In fact, he had some weakness in the nerve muscle complex, and that was the reason that he couldn't close his vocal folds with sufficient force and firmness to be able to project what he needed to project from the pulpit. I'm going to play him, you're okay. going to sing him. This is real silly. Okay. But I'm going to play Three Blind Mice, and you're going to sing for me. Three Blind Mice. So Dr. Sadiloff then prescribed for me a period of therapy to see if the voice therapists could get those vocal folds to close without surgery. Now, I want you to try the same thing again. Mm -hmm. Comfortable? Yeah. Okay. It's sort of like physical therapy for the voice. It involves exercises and training of the speaking voice, and that includes training the muscles of the abdomen and back, the way one uses lungs, in order to use the voice efficiently. We have also used singing training. As it turned out, after a month and a half, perhaps two months of therapy, it became evident to them that therapy alone was not going to solve the problem. I think in the long run, we're going to end up bringing your vocal folds closer together. Surgically, you mean? Mm -hmm. okay. So the question is whether you want to just see if you can prove me wrong and give it another month with a voice team. I'll tell you what I think we should do. I think we should schedule you for surgery in about six weeks. Let you work with the voice team. I'll see you again in another four or five weeks. And if you're making real good progress, we'll cancel.
let's get the show on the road. It's unfortunate that skin crease is so high. We'll use it anyway so he looks good, but it's going to make us work a little extra harder. In order to bring the vocal folds closer together, we make an incision and move tissues out of the way to give us access to the larynx or voice box. I'm going to put the self-retaining that way and put you guys the other way. After we move the tissues aside, we measure the place at which holes should go in the laryngeal skeleton or voice box in order to allow us to insert Gore-Tex, the same material from which ski parkas are made. That's inferior border. After we drill holes, we elevate the tissues so the Gore-Tex can be inserted and we do this with the patient awake so that he can talk to us and we can adjust vocal quality. That's the spot right there. Yep. In young people, you hardly need a drill at all. On, please. In older males in particular, the cartilage turns to bone. It ossifies, and it requires... Off, please. That should do it. it. requires a lot of work to get through. Relax. It's going to be a struggle. Open up both of the implants. All right, good. We are there. Mr. Dan, how you doing? Okay. Okay. Good. Put your head straight again. Now, Mr. Mann, count from one to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Implant, please. We'll do the right side first. You're going to feel a little bit of pressure. Yeah. Mr. Mann, your voice is being more finicky than most people. Take a nice deep breath and count from one to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, four. Eight. I'm going to try something a little different. Give me a little more pull. Now let's see if this makes you better or worse. Do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Doing a challenge, Mr. Man. Man, you're cold. I need to take a little of that out. Relax. Now count from one to ten as loudly as you can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Before I make any more adjustments, how does that sound and feel to you? I'm exhausted. Why? Well, what do you think of your voice? Try again. One, two, three, four. What do you think five. of that voice? Well, that sounds okay. Sounds okay to me, too. Sing happy birthday again. Happy birthday to you. Keep going. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. I think we're there. Dear Robert. <laughs> Does that sound more like your old preaching voice? Yeah. Well, you made me work for it, Mr. Man. His vocal folds had a little gap. They didn't quite touch. What we did to help him surgically was a procedure in which we place shims, little space fillers, between the skeleton of the voice box and the soft tissues so that the vocal folds are moved closer together. There's just more filler between the skeleton and the part that talks. Hi. How'd it go? Everything went fine. Good. Um, he was lots of work. Um, he bled a little bit more than usual, just oh, really? made it nothing serious, but yeah. inconvenient. And he was also much more sensitive than most people to very minor adjustments. Wow. I had to put prosthesis in and take it out on both sides several different times. Really? So if he heals without shifting it any place, okay? In good shape. So he needs to take it real easy. 
Okay. Um, as much as possible, Define minimize. Real easy. No bending, straining, no heavy lifting, nothing okay. where he holds his breath and squeezes. Okay. Six weeks would be ideal. Three to four weeks is really critical. Okay. So this is the first time you've spoken since then? Yeah, I've been on complete voice rest since, so okay. I didn't even know what would come out of my mouth today. Well, let's do this. Let's go one, two, three, four, five. Speak up for me. Start low and ascend. Yeah, help me set boundaries, because I'm, I'm a little anxious about overusing. Just, just you know what, um, Joanna will do that for you. Okay. I'm just going to check the range right now. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, don't force it down. The voice therapy is, is critical following the surgery because the surgery hands you the toolbox again. We've got yeah. The voice therapist right. teaches you how to use the tools again. People's recovery from this surgery varies a lot. Many of our patients have no swelling and their voices are normal at the end of surgery and they're still normal a week later. Mr. Mann took a little while to recover, but he has gotten better and better and is continuing to get better. Breathe. Relax. Good. You're making good progress. You still have some swelling in there. Really? You're go down and continue to get better still. Good. Not because it's pretty, but because it says something to us that we long to hear. That no matter who we are or what we are, there is still one person who will come in and sit down next to us and be with us just the way we are. I did the whole service today. It's the first time I've been able to do a service all by myself in a long, long time. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my I can rely on my voice now. I mean, I use my voice professionally, so not to have my voice means that I would not be able to do my job. And in, in a real sense, I feel like Dr. Sadiloff has given that back to me. Change my heart, oh God, may I be like you. There is very little that is more fun than taking somebody like Mr. Mann who is struggling just to get by. Working with him, operating on him when necessary, and then working with him again. And then seeing him go back to his life with his old spark, his old verve, and most of his old voice. May I be like you. Be wise, be smart, behave, my heart. Don't upset your cart when she's so close. Ba -ba -ba -da -da. So, I've been singing for a very long time. But be discreet. I did a lot of musical theater, and I was in an a cappella group that sang mostly jazz music, which was probably my favorite thing. I was on tour for a week in San Francisco with my a cappella group, and I felt really vocally fatigued for the entire time. But because we were performing and we were getting paid to do like a lot of gigs while we were there, I still had to go on stage and just sort of sing through it. I went back to my voice teacher and was having so many issues just singing in my normal range. Um, it had been totally cut. I went from like this to this, essentially. And I just really wasn't feeling well at all, and I said I needed to go and get scoped with the camera down my nose and all that stuff. I think maybe uh, 
asked a little too much of the group and uh, made him sing a little too many solos, I think. Maybe, maybe push him over the edge. I hope not. I hope it wasn't that. But uh, it's going to be tough without him. I, I, uh, I really hope that he can come back in the fall. It would be really incredible to have a career as a performer. I don't know if that's li if it was likely before or if it will be likely after, but I would still like to have the training and just keep that in my life. I sort of committed myself to finding like the best person who I thought could take care of it. I was looking in New York and Philadelphia. Now an arpeggio. <laughs> The whole scope, they did a camera down the throat and found the lump there. It was, I, it was the first time I had actually seen it. There was a video camera um, down my throat and I could see it over the guy's shoulder. It was this huge lump on my vocal cords. It was like one of the scariest things I've seen. That sort of meant that it was necessary for surgery to take it out, which is, um, kind of the last thing you want to hear as a singer because with the whole Julie Andrews thing who like totally lost her voice and everybody's like terrified of having lasers down their throat. The main risks of surgery we went over before, bleeding, infection, swelling, scarring, recurrence, the mask can come back. Right. Doesn't usually happen, but if I do everything perfectly and you do everything perfectly, you can still have some scar you already do. Remember, the problem with that is a healing problem. If you make an incision on the belly and do an appendix on 100 people, one or two of them will get a big, ugly scar. We, we hope you won't be one of those, because if you get a big, ugly scar in your voice box, your voice can be permanently hoarse. It can be worse than it was. Honestly, anything, even if my voice is like a little bit different, like it's anything would be better than what I have right now. Like even listening to myself speak right now, is just very like hoarse and raspy. It's just totally not what I sound like. Five, six, pick up sticks. Okay. Now, as you're saying it as a statement, can we gonna make that feeling of open stay there? Five, six, pick up sticks. Keep the sound here, sticks. It's hard, it's a hard one. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it in your mouth. Five, six, pick up sticks. Better. Yeah. It's very easy to listen to her instructions and to accomplish them. It's clearly coming from someone who knows a lot about the voice and how it functions. So we'll see what we can do about making that go away. Now, as we talked about before, you'll go to sleep. After you're asleep, there'll be a little tube put down through your throat so you can breathe while you're asleep by the anesthesiologist. I will put a scope through your mouth so there are no cuts on the outside. We do this under the microscope. I will gently remove that and inject a little cortisone, probably, something called decadron, because there's a little scar at the base of this mass, and we'll see maybe even a little stiffness on the other side. This is looking at the mass with a 70 degree laryngeal telescope. You're now looking, there's the front of the vocal folds and that there's some abnormal blood vessels that we will probably leave alone further back. Saddle off straight knife, please. Make an incision along the superior surface of this mass at its junction with normal tissue. Straight scissors on deck, please. Thank you. We'll use the scissors to bluntly dissect. Get the posterior limit of the mass. Saddle off heart shapes to the right, please. And the scissors to the left. We use the scissors to revert the leaves in a little bit. And this mass is bigger in the microscope than it is, as you see here, once it's actually removed. And give me an adrenaline, cottonoid adrenaline. Right here. Got it. 
All right, cottonoid out, please. Thank you. Perfect. Here's the rest of it. Decadron, please. This is Decadron. It is the corticosteroid that we're using not just for anti-inflammatory purposes, but to try and loosen up some of the scar. Suction, please. And this is a topical anesthetic, so it will decrease any irritation he might feel as he awakens. We're done. Being silent for a week after the surgery was was difficult for us. I think it was very difficult for Dan, for sure. But it was hard for us as well. I f we, we talked about um, how we missed him. He was with us, but because we couldn't speak and interact, that was difficult. He was physically nearby, and he got very good at pantomime, and um, so could communicate somewhat. But generally, we're pretty talky family and it was, it was hard to not speak with him. How are you? you? You're able to come off of voice rest. How do you feel? You're allowed to talk. Yeah, let me hear your voice. I'm so scared to speak. I could tell that. I could tell that downstairs. Today is the first time I've spoken anything in over a week. And surprisingly, it feels so much better than before the surgery. Like, there's just no weight on my cords, even though I don't necessarily feel hoarse. It sounds totally different to me, but it feels much healthier. Breathe. Relax. For a month post-op, you look just fine. Great. Time to start doing some singing work. We'll do it one more, let's do it one more time, dude. Yeah, I'm sorry. That was really messy. <laughs> what? Can we do that now? Is that OK? Do you, do you want to do it again? Do you want to sing it again? Do you want to sing it again? OK. Be wise, be smart, behave, my heart. Don't upset your card when she's so close. Be soft. After singing the solo a, a few times, it just like came out really naturally and easily. And then other parts in the music that I thought were difficult even before I knew I had the polyp are so much easier to me now. Comfort, just too close, too close for comfort. Please, not again. She's too close, too close to know just when to say when. Be firm, be fair. Be absolutely sure, beware. It just feels so much smoother, and I guess I'm getting, I have the sensation that I'm singing well, which I haven't had for a really long time. And that's back again, and it's really exciting to have it back. Be firm, be fair, be sure, beware on your guard, take care while there's such temptation. One thing leads to another, too late to run for cover. 
She's much too close for 